In 2023, I followed an anti-aging science-based workout routine based on the foundational principles of Andrew Huberman and Peter Atia, consisting of five parts, resistance training, VO2 max, zone two cardio, stretching, and social time. Today, I'm gonna to bring you through one of my morning workout routines, plus explain how I set up my weekly workout schedule. 5.30 a.m., coffee. a.m., multiple layers for an outdoor run in the cold. Trick, you gotta wear enough so you don't freeze, but don't overdress so you turn into a sweaty sauna and then your sweat freezes. 6 a.m., I'm off running. And I'm not a psychopath, it's not exactly 6 a.m., give or take, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. (laughs) I do three cardio sessions a week. A shorter run, which usually is around 20 to 40 minutes, which I'm doing today. Then I'll do one longer run, which really depends on what I'm training for, but it usually is anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes, sometimes a bit more if I'm training for something like a half marathon. And then I'll do one sprint session a week. I try to get a total of 10 minutes for the entire week of where I max out sprinting. So I might do five minutes twice a week or just once a week do the 10 minute session. Today, I'm simply going on a five kilometer run that took me about 30 minutes, which is a little slow for me because ice. And guess what? I'm not hardcore in the winter. If I see ice, I just slow down or walk. I'm not going to run over that. Winter is my off season for running. I don't have any distance goals. I don't have any time goals. I simply just try to keep up the routine so the habit's still there when the weather actually gets nicer. 6 or 7 a.m. I'm putting away my camera because there is no way in hell I'm actually going to run carrying this beast around. 6.30 6.30 a.m. I'm back from the run and we have an outfit change because the other one got covered in ice and dirt and I need some grub in my belly. 7. Okay, on days where I'm doing two workouts like this, I guess I'd call this breakfast, but I just kind of get in a bite where I can. I usually have like some kind of fruit, nuts and carbs. So like I'm gonna have some bread today. It could be oatmeal. And then I will have a bit more of a sit down lunch. We just recently got this like raisin bread stuff from this one shop. I cut it really unevenly, (laughs) but it's so good. I don't trust people who don't lick the knife. Honestly, what I eat between this is just randomly what I have. I sometimes have barbells, bread and butter, oatmeal. I love an apple and peanut butter. It's like one of my favorites. And this is usually, I go, ooh. Oh, I spit my lip. It's like nut raisin bread to die for. Okay, we're outside the gym and we're gonna do a two a day. Let me explain. (laughs) I do three weight sessions a week on average, sometimes four, and I could work out six times a week, but I'd rather not. So one day of the week, I double up with my weights. I either do the 10 minutes of VO2 max, or I'll do like my shorter run. My schedule kind of goes like this. Monday weights, Tuesday weights. No, what would that? Yeah, Monday weights, Tuesday weights, Wednesday weights and some cardio, Thursday rest day, Friday cardio slash maybe I'll do an optional like Pilates-esque workout or yoga. Saturday is my longer cardio Sunday rest. And I'm gonna bring you through like a typical gym workout for me. I just got to the gym and I realized my phone's dead and I need my phone to scan in. So, (laughs) um, (laughs) Hopefully someone lets me in. I have five parts to my work. We start with number one, the warm up. Part one of my workout, the warm up. I use a foam roller, the cross ball, and some hip openers. This honestly is nothing special. More so it's just dusting off the cobwebs and getting over that hurdle of starting. Knowing I just have to do a foam roller at the start makes it a lot less exhausting than knowing I have to like jump into something super hard. Number two, active mobility. Okay, now this is the actual warm up because I'm physically and mentally all there. This is where I get my muscles firing and I kind of think of it as a little rehearsal, making sure my form is right for movement patterns before we add the weights. Also, this is a great place to sneak in some mobility movements. I love such as dead bugs, bird dogs, etc. This part takes about two to 10 minutes. One's like, oh God, we just have to get off the cobwebs. And the other is like, okay, let's get going. Let's put some energy into this. But yeah, when I'm strapped for time, I just cut this section out, but it is very important and I definitely see the benefits when I do it. Back in that bag again. Whoa, whoa, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. 
part three, the actual yeah. workout. I call it sculptor stretch, aka resistance training, which can come in the form of bands, kettlebells, dumbbells, barbells, cable machines, Pilates reformer. In my anti-aging video, I said I didn't care about building muscle. Now I should explain. I no longer focus workouts around building the biggest booty. Rather, I want a strong booty. <laughs> you can train for strength, you can train for muscle growth, and they can happen in sync. And for me, longevity and quality of life, strength is more beneficial than just trying to get as big muscles as possible. Also, I don't really like the term anti-aging. I'm just gonna use it because we know what it is, okay? If someone can tell me a better word than anti-aging, please comment down below. When I'm doing my strength portion, I do this hack for my old trainer and I superset a lot of exercise with an antagonist movement or muscle. Think if the weight I lift is a push movement, like a squat, I will immediately follow it with more of a pull movement. Often the second movement is a bit more mobility focused, but not always. This can also be muscles. Think bicep, then tricep. There's no hardcore science behind this, but number one, it saves me time. And number two, it's a great way to just sneak in some mobility versus me just sitting on my phone during my rest. <laughs> That way. Now these specific exercises I've found from physios, I've been recommended by physios. There's so many physios on Instagram even that just show great exercises, which I've gotten a lot of these for because of how I sleep, how I walk, how I've worked out my whole life. I naturally stand like this. Curve in the back, lengthens my abs, tightens my hips. And so this gets weak, this gets weak. Everything for me is really but also not curving over. Okay, now I do into actual stretching. The beginning was mobility and activating, but now this is like more static stretching to work on my flexibility. And this is something I will sacrifice if I don't have time because I can do it at home later when I'm watching TV. My five S's in my anti-aging video, which is strengthen, sweat, sprint, stretch, social. The sixth bonus one, skill, which is like a fun extra. It keeps things fun. For me, it's like yoga flows, learning new yogas. It could be tennis, learning new skills. I think we forget that that can also be a fun thing of like activities, but maybe it's just something to consider if you feel kind of burnt out of just like the logistical number of workouts and just be like, oh, what could be a fun way? Learn a handstand, tennis, pickleball, learn to swim. I like yoga right now. It's just feeding my soul and like every week reviewing my little yoga flows and see how I'm improving with them. Shall we cosplay a Vogue's beauty secrets? So let's pretend I'm on one. <laughs> oh my God, that would literally be the coolest thing on earth. Post-workout shower skincare. Toner? Toner? I don't know if I believe this. I don't know. I just know I tried it and then I didn't repurchase and my skin got worse. Vitamin C, hydrating serum, moisturizer, and oil. Definitely overkill for a lot of people, but I have the genetics of the Sahara Desert, so I need all the moisturizer. Post shower hair care. Now I'm obsessed with Orbe, thanks to the advice of my hairdresser. I wanted to just jump in and say, I'm also so guilty of seeing products that influencer uses and convincing myself, I need it. I have to have it. This is the solution to all my problems because my hair is gonna get better and because my hair is better, I'll be more confident because I'm more confident, I'll do more yada, yada, yada. But the amount of times I've bought and then realized, sure, it worked for her maybe, but we're so different that it was a complete fail for me. I learned I get the most benefits from seeing an expert for the issue I'm having. For skin, my best friend Lexi, I'm very blessed, is an injectors nurse, and she's the reason I switched to medical grade skincare. Also, I use Orbe products thanks to Chris Weber, my hairdresser who specializes in blondes and have to thank for my hair journey. I got the specific exercises from both the combo of a physio I went to and my former trainer I had years back. Now, I realize seeing an expert is definitely a luxury, but I will say most of these people I've only seen maybe once or twice to get advice over the course of five years. So that's really seeing one expert a year. That's one session. And that appointment helped me find what works for me. I never want to be a gatekeeper of products I use from y'all. But I also don't want you to feel the pressure to buy something you saw that worked for me. Because the internet, I know we are all hounded by products. Like I'm honestly exhausted by the amount of like 
mental capacity I have to think of like, oh, I should buy this or I should buy this. And, and I love these shampoos, but also it's shampoo. It's not that deep and it won't change your life. Spend money on what's important. And uh, saying that, maybe I should take my own advice and start saving for a car instead of buying shampoo. <laughs> I've seen changes when I don't just see what's popular, what everyone's doing. And I'm like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go find the expert and what I wanna improve on. And a lot of times you don't have access. Like that's why I think I love Andrew Huberman. And I know you're all so sick of me saying his name on this channel. He gives free resources. Like I'm getting off topic. Back to the point of this video. And now it's 9 a.m. and my gym routine is done and I pull up to office and get to work. And by office, I mean second bedroom <laughs> in my boyfriend's apartment. Cute, girly, that girl decor. So Pinteresty. ooh, ah. So in conclusion, here's my typical gym routine right now. Mondays is weight number one and maybe do some sprints for VO2 max. Tuesdays, weight session number two. Wednesdays, shorter run, mobility, either posture correcting exercises or weight number three. Thursday, a rest day. Friday's kind of optional. I might do my VO2 max here. I might do a Pilates class. I might do a yoga class. And if life got ahead of me, I'll do one of the weight sessions I missed earlier in the week. Saturday's my optional day. It's my social day. It could be Pilates, it could be berries, it could be walk. I would just really try and do something semi-active with my friends, but if we're all exhausted, we might just do yoga. But if we all have kind of slacked off, we might do something intense like berries. And Sunday is a rest day slash I do like to go on like a long hot girl walk, not really for activity, but I find I just get away from my phone and I come up. It's just like really more creative rejuvenation and it's so low impact that's not stressful on my body. I, I should premise, I am a trained individual. I went from playing sports to university basketball to doing fitness, having fitness channels. So my body can handle quite a bit of movement and not be stressed out just because it's adapted. Your body does adapt. If you're new to working out, don't think you have to be in the gym five to six times a week. Maybe start literally five minutes, five times a week or just three sessions or even two sessions or just doing a bunch of walks. Start so simple and just add. That's always been my best premise for starting a habit, is starting so it's so easy and just add a little and little and little so you never get overwhelmed and fall off. The biggest thing I tell for myself is I just have to be 100% recovered for Monday. So if I've done something or I'm in a certain training period and I don't feel recovered, I might take an extra rest day. As long as Monday morning I wake up and I feel recovered fully, I know I've balanced it enough. And then sometimes I will be like, Kelty, you kind of slack it. Let's increase intensity a bit. And this routine is for longevity. This is something I can see myself doing the rest of my life. Three weight sessions, three cardio sessions, mobility as much as I can, and a social time with friends. I can do that probably, hopefully, for the rest of my life. Now, performance and longevity are two different things. Sometimes, especially athletes, if anything, they sacrifice longevity to be better performers. And maybe when I'm training for a marathon or something like that, I will have to ramp up my training and make sacrifices other places in my life. But that's just, you know, neither is right or wrong. It's just normally I'm just going for longevity, waking up feeling good every day, being able to do the things I wanna do every day. Like I said, I wanna be able to run around and go for races in the next several decades of my life. I wanna be able to dance till late in the morning. I wanna be jump up on stage. I wanna just be able to move and any fitness class my friends invite me to, I'm able to go to. And that's really the premise of this workout. And if I give one takeaway, I'm really bad at like hyper-focusing, like I'm just into cardio, just into weights, just into Pilates. But when you have the balance of them all is when you feel your best. And so it's just kind of having those little buckets like in my weights like I have the four buckets and I might just do one I might do two three and like depending how busy my life is the more I can do and every Sunday sitting there and planning out the week I'm like oh do I have a little bit of strength oh do I have a little bit of mobility and I block it out in my calendar I'm not too precise about it but I'm just kind of mindful that 150 minutes of zone two it works out to be about three sessions 10 minutes of vo2 maxes one to two little sprints at the end of a workout or a berries class mobility just try and do before or after every workout and strength three sets of every muscle group three times a week i can kind of get by doing that so i hope that answered some of your guys's questions um, I can't give specifics. I am not a personal trainer. I don't know your specific goals, but hopefully that can just give some frameworks of how you can know how to shape your week using those Andrew Huberman and Peter Atia protocols of my five S's and just kind of spread it throughout what works best for you. And if it all sounds overwhelming, just try and do one to two things for even five minutes out of all those things. Go on a little walk with your friends, stretch for a few minutes every day, maybe do weights once or twice, get in a hot girl walk and maybe sprint once. <laughs>
So hopefully that helps. If you guys would like any of my other routines, comment down below. I'd love to bring that to you. And most importantly, have a great day. Go pet a dog. Love you guys. Bye. Oh, I'm listening to a podcast right now. And it uh, had a point that I just thought was so perfect for this video. The guy's going on and saying how he loves people who are optimizing because he can beat them in the sense that like he's competing against someone who has to have their perfect night routine, perfect morning routine, eight hours of sleep, enough water, eat their certain way, journal, meditate, do all these things. And he's like, oh, I don't need to. So if those things aren't there, I'm going to beat them. I'm like, oh, that's so true. I'm all about a routine. You guys know I love a routine, but I think we have to be careful right now because we're all in this like optimize, get sleep, get sunlight, get water, get all these. But like, don't think if you don't have them, you can't perform. Like here's how I've been visualizing my workout and my water and my sleep and all this is like, I do it to hundred percent of my ability as much as I can. So when things aren't optimized, I know I'm healthy. Like here's an example. I know when I travel, it's delayed and I'm in the airport for 24 hours and I don't sleep. It's okay. I've gotten sleep for so long. I've eaten so healthy, it doesn't matter that I'm just living off candy this one day. Like I've done the work in the past that a couple days won't throw me off. And so I think we really have to think of it that way. Like we're filling this cup. So when things aren't optimal, it's okay. We got this full cup, it's overflowing. You can empty it out versus not having any routines or structure and having this empty cup and try to pull from that. But when you got a full cup, it's okay if you lose some. And I'm saying this to you as I'm saying this to myself because sometimes I'm like stressed out that my night routine isn't perfect and I, you know what I mean? It's just we're just trying to get in as much as we can so when life happens it's okay